Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding person uh, as a guest here today. Uh, he is a person uh, that Lake County should know. Good morning, Pastor Francis. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Brooks. Pastor Walstone Francis, uh, you're the pastor of the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church and no, no, Walking no, 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 in that's, Illinois. No, the Shallow Baptist Church. Shallow, excuse not, me, Shallow no, Baptist Church. Thank you. And that's that's what I have here. I don't know. I'll get you a <laughs> missionary. Uh, as you know, Lake County is approximately 750,000 people, but I don't know how many up at 5 o'clock this Sunday morning listen to the program, but I understand we have a, a pretty good audience. Um Pastor Francis, uh, for those that don't know you, I'd like for you to tell our listening audience a little bit about um, your personal and professional background. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm born in Nassau, Bahamas, uh, raised, and uh, after high school, uh, came to Nashville, Tennessee. I was called uh, to preach at that time. Mm -hmm. My father uh, was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Nassau, Bahamas, mm -hmm. and he brought me to Nashville. Uh, to a Bible college, the American Baptist College, mm -hmm. ABC, as it is called, mm -hmm. in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. on the Holy Hill, as we are known. And so I matriculated there for four years, mm -hmm. graduated with, uh, well, actually five years, a BA and a BTH, a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Theology degree. Mm -hmm. And I have not gone any further in any academic pursuits. Mm -hmm. uh, I pastored... Uh, two churches prior to coming to uh, the Shiloh Baptist Church. I was pastoring while I was in school in, in Nashville, Smyrna, Tennessee. Mm. Uh, at the, there at the Mount View Baptist Church in 1974 to 1979. I was there for five years. Small church, small preacher, small salary. Everything was small. Great. $20 an hour, $20 a week. Wow. <laughs> it was a wonderful job. <laughs> uh, and then, and then after that, um, I I came to the uh, to the Alpha Missionary Baptist Church in Franklin, Kentucky. And while I was in Franklin, Kentucky, and I was there for twelve years, mm -hmm. nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety one. Mm. Amen. Ninety two, ninety two. Amen. Okay. And while I was working, while I was pastoring that church, I was working for the National Baptist Publishing Board uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, the Boyd Convention as it is known, different than the township, Townsend Convention, okay. which, is the, which, is, which is the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. I worked for the National Baptist Convention of America for 12 years in the publishing business. And man, it was a tremendous blessing to pastor and to be on the publishing board was a marvelous thing. So I came to, I came to Waukegan in 1992, mm -hmm. and I've been here ever since, 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. I think I met you uh, early uh, when you, the, the first church that I uh, belonged to when I came right out of, uh, right out of college into the, uh, the VA um, Medical Center, VA Hospital, really, and then on to Great Lakes. But the first church that I attended was a shallow Baptist church under the pastoral uh, leadership of Reverend Gene Lightfoot. Yes. Oh, yes. And, 37 uh, years he was pastor. Wow. Yes, and I still would have been there, except we started a business there in North Chicago, and the Mount Sinai Institutional Baptist Church was right across the street. So <laughs> we uh, we just changed our membership there and been there ever ever since. Amen, amen. But tell us about the uh, well. First of all, we have uh, uh, people in this world think they're here by accident. They don't know their reason here, but everyone here is here for a purpose. Absolutely. We have, we have a purpose-driven life. Absolutely. But, but tell us about our purpose here on earth. Yeah, pr primarily, ultimately, our purpose should be and must be to have a relationship with the Lord. Okay. That that, that relationship grounds us and gives us the not only a perspective about our physical life and our present life here, mm -hmm. but it but allows us to tap into the eternal experience of being able to know and understand that God, who is all wise, all knowing, all powerful, all loving, is a God of purpose. So, so the God who created us, 
must also be the God who saves us so that we can have this incredible relationship with him and be able then, because he saves us, he is a God of purpose. So he, so he purposely, our salvation, help me now, mm-hmm. is designed to, to gift us and to prepare us to do what it is we've been sent to do. So whatever that is, that could be mm-hmm. a whole lot of things. Uh, but ultimately, and so in my case, my case, I, I didn't want to be a preacher. I wasn't looking to preach. Okay. Preaching found me. I didn't find it. So God took the initiative to, 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 to call me, save me, <clears throat> and then to purpose my life so that, so that he put me on this incredible track and on this incredible course mm-hmm. to be able to be the man, the preacher, the pastor, the teacher that I am uh, on this day. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking with Pastor Wallstone E. Francis, uh, pastor of the Shallow Baptist Church in Waukegan, Illinois, located 800 South Genesee Street Amen. Uh, in Waukegan. Yes. Pastor Francis, um, Christ did not appoint everyone for the same purpose. Yes. Um, we have uh, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and also teachers. Yes. Um, so, but each one is called, each one of us is called for a different purpose. Yes. How do we find what that purpose is? You mentioned your case, God yeah. called you to be a pastor. Yeah, but the reality is it's still the same answer. My answer to you about what the Lord did for me mm-hmm. is the same answer for anybody else. It is God who takes the initiative. Uh, to bestow upon us that which we need to have in order to ultimately fulfill his design and his purpose for our lives. So so I can only speak, I, I can't speak for those who are outside of the church. Okay. But I most certainly can, in other words, for me, it's, it's, it's this relationship with God is the ultimate experience and it is the ultimate manifestation of all that I was made to be, and God is the one who makes all that happens and makes all that possible. Now, uh, tell us God's purpose of creation. Yes, yes. He 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 most certainly he, he most certainly his design uh, ultimately was for man to 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 literally to be multiply. And to, in other words, to be uh, the, the, have dominion and control over everything that he created. So when God created everything, he began with light and he ended with man. And everything in between, when you follow it, it was an incredible order that he designed. And so man is created last because, because everything had to be in place for him. So when he comes... Everything that he needs to do and to be is already there, laid out for him in an incredible way. But the whole design was for man to have this incredible relationship with God, Mm -hmm. to to be able then to be rooted and grounded and do the things that God has designed. And of course, as you know, sin entered the world, and it most certainly changed uh, the whole dynamic. Well, we have uh, uh, two um, uh, sins. We have a heavenly sin because Lucifer— um, decided that he wanted to be God. Yes. Yes. And so, what is is that still happening today? Well, well I'm not that, understanding the question. That people don't want to say people. He, Lucifer, he's an angel and a vice versa, the archangel. I yes. Guess, right. Yes. Right. Yes. He is. But it wasn't satisfied. Now the second sin. Uh, I'm fast forwarding this. In man, um, he had to rule over over the earth. Yes. Then. What happened? He wasn't satisfied uh, that he um, volunt- he volunteered to sin. Yeah, well, but remember now that, that, that when you come to the third chapter of Genesis, mm-hmm. it talks about the, the, the serpent. Uh, so now the enemy, Satan, is in a form of a serpent, and he comes to Eve. And what he does is he literally tempts her. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, when you come to the scriptures, 1 John 2.16 okay. talks about the pride of life, uh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, which are the three areas where the enemy tempts us. Mm-hmm. And so when you read Genesis 3 and how when Satan comes to, 
when the serpent comes to Eve, you see these three things being manifested. He literally focuses on the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. And so you see that. Mm. She saw the fruit, you see? Okay. It was good for you, and on and on like that, you see? So, so what actually happens is, Satan, remember now that they were perfect. Okay. There was right. no sin. Right. But what happens is Satan brings a whole new dynamic and a whole new way of thinking that they never really thought about, yeah. you see. And so consequently, it became interesting and ultimately led, as you know, uh, to our, our parents, original parents, sinning. But remember, it was not until Adam took the fruit and ate it uh, that the sin was manifested, that even though even though even though Eve was in the transgression, the ultimate thing was that that Adam was the head of the family, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when the head falls, everything else falls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so there's this great fall that took place. Help us. Now, now, so it wasn't until Adam ate of the fruit that things started happening. Right. Right. Bottom line. So when God comes, when God appears, he does not come to talk to Eve. Okay. He comes to talk directly to Adam mm -hmm. because he was responsible for, for his family. That is As we all are, uh, those of us who are married, we understand this process very well. <laughs> so that was really the origin of uh, sin. Yeah. The, yeah the, 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 remember now, that the original sin, uh, the original sin is the sin of Satan. Okay. And, and then the original sin of man, uh, the, in other words, the original sin of man is not so much, in other words, the sin of Adam is not so, the, 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 that which impacts us mm -hmm. is not so much Adam's sin, but the effects, it's the effect of his sin that falls on us, you see. And so consequently, here we are dealing with sins, the result okay. of what okay. takes place when sin took, transpired itself. Amazing. Yes. God had a plan for man's salvation even before uh, the creation, right? Yes, Ephesians, Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 1 lays it out clearly that 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 we were chosen in him okay. before the foundation mm. of the world that, that 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 God's design was already in other words his salvific plan was already in place why because you see creation has to do with time mm -hmm. salvation has to do with eternity okay. you'll get this tomorrow or next week okay yeah okay. so so but understand now for God, come on now, for God to be able to bring that which is eternal salvation, you understand, mm -hmm. and, and allow us to receive it, he had to do it in time. Amen. So Not on time, no, yeah, but it, in time. Yeah, God has to come. In other words, his plan for us has to meet us where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the marvelous thing. So before he created the world, the salvitic plan was already in place because it is an eternal plan, the world he created was temporary. It was, it was stamped by time. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking with Pastor Walson E. Francis, pastor of the Shallow Baptist Church in Waukegan, Illinois. And as I mentioned at the top of the program, he is an exemplary person, and he's definitely a person that you should know. Uh, pastor Francis, uh, if a person came to you and said, how can I be saved? Yes. yes. Is, is that an appropriate question? It is an appropriate question. And, and the answer would be, uh, I, I, would, I would say to them uh, that what they have to do is, is they have to believe that Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man. He is... He is both God and man. And as the Council of Chalcedon said, that Jesus Christ is, is a man. He, has, he is one person, mm -hmm. but he has two natures. Mm. And the idea is, is that they specifically said it intentionally 
for us to understand that his humanity did not mix with his deity and his deity did not mix with his humanity. Mm-hmm. Because if, his, if, if just one ounce of his human nature mixed with his deity, then he would no longer be divine. So, so the consul made it clear he had two natures. He was the son of God and he was the son of man. So, so you have to believe in the incarnation that God became a man. Amen. And then you have to believe that his death on the cross, that when he died on the cross, he died for our sins to save us. In other words, he comes to pay the penalty of sin. The cross, remember now, is up and down, which means it is vertical. Okay. And it is b- b- right and left, which means it is horizontal. So that there are two issues. One, the vertical issue is the issue of God. Okay. The horizontal issue is the issue of man. So when Christ is dying on the cross, he is dying on the cross, one, to, to settle once and for all the justice of God, mm-hmm. because justice must always be paid. But secondly, to manifest the love of God. Mm. Amen. So the justice of God, that, that God, God had to be, the price had to be paid and God had to be appeased. Why? Because where there's sin, God is angry. And, and, so, and so Jesus had to deal with the justice of his father, but he also had to deal with the sin of man. Mm-hmm. And so in a marvelous way, what is it that God does uh, to allow us to be saved? He manifests his love, which is a manifestation of his grace and his mercy in a marvelous way. So, so the cross plays two roles. One, it appeases the anger of God where the justice of God is paid, the price is paid, Mm -hmm. and two, it secures for man the love of God, where man is, listen, his sins are covered and forgiven. So it's a marvelous process. Why did blood have to be shed? Because Hebrews reminds us, Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. You cannot be saved Mm -hmm. unless blood is shed. And that is the whole message of the Old Testament. And ultimately, it is the ultimate manifestation of what Christ came to do. He came to shed his blood, to pay, to pay the ultimate price. Remember now, remember now, the wages of sin is death. That is, that is that sin brings death. Mm -hmm. So what does Christ do? Christ pays the ultimate penalty of dying for us. But now he wasn't dying because of sin. He was dying, remember now, because he violated, in other words, he had no sin. Okay. And because he had no sin, he could not die. Okay. Because sin brings death. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sin brings death. But he died. Somebody say, well, well, how is that possible? If he had no sin and he couldn't die, why did he die? Well, remember John 10, 17 and 18 reminds us that Jesus said, he said, he says, no one takes my life. I lay it down of myself. And then he says, and I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. So here what you actually see is he voluntarily gave up his life. Oh, what a what an ultimate manifestation of the love of God that he would be willing to sacrifice himself for you and for me and pays the ultimate price and allowing us to be able. So, so to be saved, you have to believe in the incarnation. You have to believe in the crucifixion that he died on the cross to save us from our our sins. And then you have to also believe that he was buried. Somebody said, well, why is that important? Mm-hmm. Well, you see, he had to be dead. Lord, help me somebody. Okay. And, right. so, and so the proof, remember the centurion comes and he sticks him in the side. And when the centurion sticks him in the side and blood and water comes out, then what, the, the, because the centurion, this is, this is my own interpretation, the centurion was the legal coroner at the cross. He was the one who determined uh, that, oh, no, this guy is dead. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he didn't faint. He didn't fall out. He, you understand he wasn't out? No, he died. Mm-hmm. He literally sacrificed <laughs> himself for us. 
And then not only, you must also believe in the resurrection. You must believe that the Christ who died on the cross for us, buried in the grave, was raised from the dead. And this is the message of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, where Paul gives to us what we call the gospel. The gospel, the good news of Christ, mm-hmm. is that he died, mm-hmm. that he was buried, and that he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And if you believe that, you will be saved. But remember now that salvation is by grace. And what that simply means is, is that it is nothing that you do and nothing that I do, but what God does for us, God graces us. He blesses us with his grace. Lord have mercy. And grace, Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8, we're saved by, by, by grace through faith. And what he's basically saying is, is that faith becomes the visible manifestation of the grace of God. That we believe that Jesus died, we believe that he was buried, and we believe that he was raised from the dead. And Paul said, if you believe that, you will be saved. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, he is an awesome God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. And with all that, in the book of Ephesians, the whole duty of man then is to fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah, yeah. The whole duty of man. And again, you're quoting from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, uh, verse 13. Uh, That's the 13th verse. Uh, And then, of course, the 14th verse talks about the judgment of God uh, that that that's coming too. But yeah, you you have to fear God and keep his commandments. In, In other words, you must have this internal conviction Fear God, okay. but you must also have this outward manifestation. You have to keep his commandments. So somebody will say, well, how do I know you fearing God? Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't see it. I say, well, you can. If you watch my life, you can see the obedience that I'm manifesting. So obedience is keeping the commandments. Reverence is allowing me to be able to fear God, respect God, and to give God his due. Amen, somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to receive the salvation of God, um, oh boy, we we live on this earth for what three score and ten, and maybe a few more will be added, you know, by the grace of God. Yes, well, you I know. know you've already passed that. So. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I'm I'm eighty three. That's what I'm so, saying. You're ready moving. To I, had a, I had a mother that was ninety. I understand. I'm saying, saying you already, you already passed the first one. <laughs> so I'm still working harder. Amen. To get there, Amen. you know why? Because uh, uh, here, it, it, you had a young man, uh, Brother A.C. Taylor. He's the late, late A.C. Taylor. Now they moved from Shiloh. He moved to Atlanta. Family moved to Atlanta. His song was, I'll trade a lifetime yeah. to spend one day, one day in paradise. Yeah, 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 yeah yes, you yes, know. yes. It's the ultimate gift that God has for us, that we will be with the Lord uh, throughout the countless ages of eternity, and it's just a marvelous, we marvelous to, blessing. We, we just can't comprehend that the short time we have here, 70 years, compared to eternity. Yes, there's no, com- there's no, no comparison. There's, there's, there's no second chance. No, there's no comparison. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Wow, wow, yes. wow, and wow. So, and so I thank God, I thank God, you see, because what happens is, if God does not come to us, mm-hmm. We will never be able, you see, to know and have this wonderful life that he's prepared for us. And it's just a marvelous thing. It's just a wonderful thing that he's done for us. And during this lifetime, this this lifetime journey, uh, you either in a storm, you're going through a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. That's the whole life. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's, it's a, it is a struggle, uh, but by the grace of God and by the love of God, and, and, of course, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of God and the Word of God, these are the two powerful things that God has given to us that allows us to live out this incredible life that God has given to us. And it's just a marvelous thing, marvelous man. Mm-hmm. So it's very important then to, you know, you've given us a glimpse of this in in the 28 minutes that we're here on the air. Uh, wish we could have more time. We need a series yeah. on this, you know. But it's important to, for Bible study, for 
uh, your person to attend Bible study. Right? Yeah, you you want to be or able Sunday school. Or you you want BTU all of that. Or... You you want to have access. In other words, your discipling mm -hmm. becomes real critical. So Sunday school is the foundational. In other words, Sunday school prepares you to have the general understanding of the scriptures. Okay, it's an introduction primarily to get you to have. So so in six years. You actually go through the whole the whole, whole Bible in Sunday school, but you also need a deeper and more personal time in the Word, and so it becomes important to be able to do so in a marvelous way. I do want to make a personal I do want to make a personal statement while I'm on the air. Okay, as you know, I've been married to Angela Renee Odie uh, Francis, uh, and this coming Sunday uh, we will be celebrating 40 years of marriage. Fantastic! Uh, and so I I can't be on the air. And not mention her name, and of course, you know, I I am blessed uh, with with some tremendous children and grandchildren. I, I even have three great grandchildren. Wow! And so I'm just a young man uh, <laughs> trying to make it ends meet. But but the joy of being in the Lord and being able to watch what the Lord does is such a marvelous gift to me, and I praise God for it. I'm grateful for the work that you do and the difference you have made down through the years. I met you all the way back in the 19, early 1990s, uh, and we had a couple of shows back then, and it was just a marvelous time to share with you. And I'm grateful that the Lord continues to use you in this way. Man, what a blessing it is to know you and to, and to be able to share with you. And I travel with you to uh, Chicago uh, when you— uh, Except your citizenship. Yes, in 1994, man, July 19th, I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an incredible, it was just an incredible time of being able to come. Uh, Shiloh was my third church. Uh, the other two churches were country churches, so there really wasn't any need for me to become a citizen. But when I came to Waukegan, I came to the urban territory, yeah. <laughs> and the Shiloh <laughs> Church was very, very active in, in the political process, and I just could not lead this flock yeah. and not be able to be a citizen, and above all, the tremendous privilege to be able to vote. Yeah. My goodness gracious. Yes. But I do need to say that voting is important, but it's not enough because we have to be able to connect with our, our elected officials and most certainly keep them accountable. But thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you. And you have become active, uh, uh, too, in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the city, too. Uh, and you follow Reverend uh, uh, Lightfoot, I think. He worked, he was active in the city, too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we most certainly are trying to make sure that we play our part uh, in this process with our pastors and with our community. And ultimately, you know, we have to be able to not only save souls, but we have to be able to make sure that there are people who are unemployed, there are people who are incarcerated, there are people who have special needs. And, you know, so we want to share the gospel, but we also know that we have a high a responsibility to make sure that our communities are productive and that people are living substantial lives. Pastor Walson E. Francis, I want to thank you very much for taking time from your, literally from your busy schedule uh, to be with us on Community Forum to let Lake County, Lake County is approximately 750,000 people, but as I say at the top of the program, I don't know how many up, it's 5 o'clock this Sunday morning listen to the program, but we do have a, a wide audience. And I want to thank you for even mentioning your family. Uh, family is so important. It was ordained by God. Right? Amen. Ordained Amen. Of uh, family. And, Absolutely. And also um, communion. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Ordained by God. So yes. you're doing yes. God, God's yes. work. And we'd like to have you again on uh, uh, as a follow-up and still to talk about the God's purpose for man and and women on, on this earth. And what what does it take to be saved? Because I think we'll have a, a better community a better country, a better world, if we had people uh, lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. Then he say, "If I, if if I be lifted up, I, I will, will draw." draw. That's what he said. That's so you said. don't draw. All Amen. you do is lift, lift Amen. up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God he bless. The God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Focus. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Senior.